I'm talking about hip and low back pain. One of the times, or some of the times I should say, a big contributor is the fact that we actually don't have proper hip stability, i.e. the muscles of the hip that basically take that ball and socket joint and make sure that it's rotating and, and moving, sliding, rolling, gliding in the exact ways that it needs to so that we can have great range of motion and great capacity to do whatever movements we're trying to do. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about a kind of progression in how to start to activate some of the, the external rotators, again, the muscles that turn my leg outwards, which is a, a really strong muscle group that we need when we're doing things like squats, deadlifts, all of our, our kind of working out movements, but also, again, helps stabilize the leg on the pelvis, so walking, all those kind of fundamental things. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off in the, the shin box position, and if you have no idea what the shin box is, go ahead and check out our video here, here, um, on how to do that. So I'm gonna start off in the shin box, and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go from easiest to hardest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be targeting my front leg, okay? So in this case, it's my left side. I'm gonna turn my body from the shin box. I'm gonna turn over to the left. From here, I wanna plant my entire shin down into the ground. The idea is this external rotator here, as it activates, it's going to push my knee and my leg down into the ground and lift my hips up. So I'm here in the shin box and I'm gonna push down into the ground and that's gonna raise my hips up off the floor. I'll come back down again one more time. I'm pushing up. Again, all the pressure is here. There's a little bit in this backhand over here, but there's little to nothing in this back leg. I could lift it up. It's not doing anything. All that pressure is down into the side of the knee going down. So this is the easiest when I have my, my body upright because I can kind of shift my weight a little bit farther back and the line of drive on the muscles is just slightly off in that sense, so it should be easier. So that's step one. Step two is gonna be down on my hands and elbows here, but I'm activating that muscle in the exact same way. So knee and shin is gonna be going down into the ground. I'm gonna lift those hips up and down. Up and down, and slowly over time, you may be able to find that you can raise it a little higher. We're having a little bit of the core contract as well because I'm in this twisted position. This is a really great exercise. But finally, after that, right, and of course, we scale those as we go because we want to make sure that we're doing perfect reps, right? We want to make sure that we're actually activating the muscle, not just going through the motion. Once we kind of go through that, the, the highest point, if you will, or second highest, there, there is one more after this one that we'll get into, is basically from our shin box position, pressing down and almost standing up. So if I'm here in the shin box, again, the main contributor is gonna be my forward leg, if you will. I'm just kind of turned at um, this angle just to kind of get a better shot. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press down into that leg and lift myself up. Little clicking, little popping, totally fine. Importantly, I wanna slowly sit down. That's gonna engage those muscles and really get some good activation. Again, I'm pressing up, down, up, and down. The final kind of progression into this lateral, i.e. the outside of the hip, getting those external rot rotators turned on is going to be kind of our shin box step throughs. So we rise up like we've been doing. And from here, I'm gonna keep this nice and strong and I'm going to kind of pivot myself so I can swing this back leg out into a lunge. Now this, we can end here, that's totally fine. But if we're working on gaining stability, right, then I can transition into my other side, right? I can activate my external rotators and get into a squat. Back down. Again, I'm controlling the entire time. I'm not just throwing myself to and fro. 
nice and strong up. I turn, bring the leg out, externally rotate, push that knee out to the side to gain stability. Step into the squat, back. Whoop. I wasn't being controlled there. So I'll we'll slow it down again. Back, down, much better. Right? So there's tons of different ways that we can move and do and, and work off of that shin box position, but those are the ways that we're gonna start to stair step up, getting some activation in the side of the hip. Again, all in the shin box. First one, turning to that side, raising the body up. Second one, down low. Third one, coming up, right? Those are gonna be the ways we wanna activate the outside of the hip and get strong. I would recommend 10 to 15 reps per set. I would work on both sides unless you know you have an asymmetry, i.e. one side is weaker than the other. Um, if that's the case and you know one side's weaker, I would do three sets, do the weak one, the strong one, and then the weak one again. That's a great way to make sure that you're supplementing that side that's a little weaker with a little more intensity or a little more frequency, I should say. But play around with that and let us know how it goes in the comments. Wait, did you like restart?